Hello and welcome to the conclusion of the crucible. This is Act 4, top of page 1319. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Hale asks in Act 3. Danforth observes, A person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. Such remarks stress the powerlessness of people like John Proctor and Giles Corey against the mounting injustices in Salem. In pursuing justice, their efforts backfire and their own names join the list of those accused. What do you think the final outcome will be? Who will survive and who will perish? Read the final act to see if your predictions are correct. Act 4. A cell in Salem Jail that fall. At the back is a high barred window. Near it, a great heavy door. Along the walls are two benches. The place is in darkness, but for the moonlight seeping through the bars. It appears empty. Presently, footsteps are heard coming down a corridor beyond the wall. Keys rattle, and the door swings open. Marshal Herrick enters with a lantern. He is nearly drunk and heavy-footed. He goes to a bench and nudges a bundle of rags lying on it. Sarah, wake up. Sarah, good. He then crosses to the other benches. Oh, Majesty, come in, come in. Tituba, he's here. His Majesty's come. Go to the north cell. This place is wanted now. He hangs his lantern up, and Tituba sits up. That don't look to me like his majesty. Look to me like the marshal. Get along with you now. Clear this place. He takes out his flask, and he's drinking. He's boozing. Um. Oh, is it you, marshal? I thought sure you'd be the devil coming for us. Could I have a sip of cider for me going away? And where are you off to, Sarah? We go on to Barbados. Soon the devil gets here with the feathers and the wings. Oh, a happy voyage to you. A pair of bluebirds winging southerly, the two of us. Oh, it'd be a grand transformation, Marshal. She raises the flask to drink again and he takes it away from her. You'd best give that to me or you'll never rise off the ground. Come along now. I'll... Sp I'll speak to him for you, if you desire to come along, Marshal. I'd not refuse it, Tituba. It's the proper morning to fly into hell. Oh, it be no hell in Barbados, devil. Him be pleasure man in Barbados. Him be singing and dancing in Barbados. It's you folks. You rouse him up round here. It be too cold round here for that old boy. He freezes. He freezes soul in Massachusetts. But in Barbados, he just as sweet and... Aye, sir. That's him, Sarah. I'm here, Majesty. They hurriedly pick up their rags as Hopkins, a guard, enters. The deputy governor's arrived. Come along, come along. No, he coming for me. I going home. That's not Satan, just a poor old cow with a hat full of milk. Come along now, out with you. Take me home, devil. Take me home. Tell him I'm going, Tituba. Now you tell him Sarah Good is going too. So we'll stop and answer number one right there. In the corridor outside, Tituba calls on, Take me home, devil. Devil, take me home. And Hopkins' voice orders her to move on. Herrick returns and begins to push old rags and straw into a corner. Hearing footsteps, he turns and enter Danforth and Judge Hawthorne. They are in great coats and wear hats against the bitter cold. They are followed in by Cheever, who carries a dispatch case and a flat wooden box containing his writing materials. Good morning, Excellency. Where is Mr. Paris? I'll fetch him. Marshal? When did Reverend Hale arrive? It were toward midnight, I think. What is he about here? He goes among them that will hang, sir, and he prays with them. He sits with Goody Nurse now, and Mr. Paris with him. Indeed! That man have no authority to enter here, Marshal. Why have you let him in? Why, Mr. Paris command me, sir. I cannot deny him. Are you drunk, Marshal? No, sir. It is a bitter night, and I have no fire here. Fetch Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. There is a prodigious stench in this place. I have only now cleared the people out for you. Beware hard drink, Marshal. Aye, sir. He waits for further orders, but Danforth, in dissatisfaction with him, turns his back on him, and Herrick goes out. There is a pause, and Danforth stands in thought. 
Let you question Hale, Excellency. I should not be surprised he had been preaching in Andover lately. And you got to read the bottom about what's going on in Andover because it informs what's going on in Salem right now. So Andover, during the height of the terror in Salem Village, a similar hysteria broke out in the nearby town of Andover. This is also a real place and a real thing that happened. There, many respected people were accused of practicing witchcraft and confessed to escape death. However, in Andover, people soon began questioning the reality of the situation and the hysteria quickly subsided. So we could today be talking about the Andover witch trials instead of the Salem witch trials. But in Andover, they kind of like, once the hysteria started, they stopped it. They said, no, we're not doing this. Salem, they kept going. And that's why Salem's famous today and Andover's not. We'll come to that. Speak nothing of Andover. Paris prays with him. That's strange. <sighs> Excellency, I wonder if it'd be wise to let Mr. Paris so continuously with the prisoners. I think sometimes the man has a mad look these days. Mad? I met him yesterday coming out of his house, and I bid him good morning, and he wept and went on his way. I think it is not well the village sees him so unsteady. Perhaps he have some sorrow. I think it be the cows, sir. Cows? There be so many cows wandering the high roads. Now their masters are in the jails in much disagreement who they will belong to now. I know Mr. Paris be arguing with farmers all yesterday. There is great contention, sir, about the cows. Contention make him weep, sir. It were always a man that weep for contention. He turns as do Hawthorne and Danforth, hearing someone coming up the corridor. Danforth raises his hand, his head, sorry, as Paris enters. Paris is gaunt, means very, very skinny, frightened, and sweating in his great coat. Let's stop and answer number two about the cows and what's going on in Salem. All right, middle of 1321. Oh, good morning, sir. Thank you for coming. I beg your pardon waking you so early. Good morning, Judge Hawthorne. Reverend Hale have no right to enter this. Excellency, a moment. He t takes his, hurries back and shuts the door. Do you leave him alone with the other prisoners? What's his business here? Excellency, hear me. It is a providence. Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess? Hear me. Rebecca have not given me a word this three months since she came. Now she sits with him and her sister and Martha Corey and two or three others, and he pleads with them, confess their crimes, and save their lives. Why, this is indeed a providence. This is a good thing. And they soften? They soften? Not yet, not yet, uh, but I thought to summon you, sir, that we might think on whether it not be wise to... I had thought to put a question, sir, and I hope you will not... Mr. Paris, be plain. What troubles you? There is news, sir, that the court, the court must reckon with. My niece, sir, my niece, I believe she has vanished. Vanished? I had thought to advise you of it earlier in the week, but... Why? How long is she gone? This be the third night. You see, sir, she told me she would stay a night with, with Mercy Lewis. And the next day, when she does not return, I send to Mr. Lewis to inquire. Mercy told him she would sleep in my house for a night. They are both gone? They are, sir. I will send a party for them. Where may they be? Excellency, I think they'd be aboard a ship. My daughter tells me how she heard them speaking of ships last week, and tonight I discover my... my strong box is broke into... It's like it's safe. He presses his fingers against his eyes to keep back tears. She have robbed you? Thirty-one pound is gone! I am penniless! <laughs> Mr. Paris... You are a brainless man! Let's stop and answer number three about Abigail and where she's gone. And what she did on her way out. Middle of 1322. Excellency, it profit nothing you should blame me. I cannot think they would run off except they fear to keep in Salem anymore. Mark it, sir. Abigail had close knowledge of the town. And since the news of Andover has broken here, Andover is remedied. The court returns there on Friday and will resume examinations. I am sure of it, sir. But the rumor here speaks rebellion in Andover, and it... There is no rebellion in Andover. I tell you what is said here, sir. 
Andover have thrown out the court, they say, and will have no part of witchcraft. There be a faction here feeding on that news, and I tell you true, sir, I fear there will be a riot here. Riot? Why, at every execution, I have not seen but high satisfaction in the town. Judge Hawthorne, it were another sort that hanged till now. Rebecca Nurse is no Bridget that lived three year with Bishop before she married him. John Proctor is not Isaac Ward that drank his family to ruin. I would to God it were not so, Excellency, but these people have great weight yet in the town. Let Rebecca stand upon the gibbet, that's where they hang you, and send up some righteous prayer, and I fear she'll wake a vengeance on you. Excellency, she is condemned a witch. The court have, pray you. How do you propose then? Excellency, I would postpone these hangings for a time. There will be no postponement. Now Mr. Hale's return, there is hope, I think. For if he bring even one of these to God, that confession surely damns the others in the public eye, and none may doubt more that they are all linked to hell. This way, unconfessed and claiming innocence, doubts are multiplied. Many honest people will weep for them, and our good purpose is lost in their tears. Hmm. Give me the list. So Cheever opens the dispatch case and searches. It cannot be forgot, sir, that when I summon the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, that's when you formally kick someone out of the church, there were hardly 30 people come to hear it. That speak of discontent, I think, and there will be no postponement. Excellency. Now, sir, which of these, in your opinion, may be brought to God? I will myself strive with him till dawn. He hands the list to Paris, who merely glances at it. There is not sufficient time till dawn. I shall do my utmost. Which of them do you have hope for? Excellency, a dagger. <laughs> what do you say? Tonight, when I opened my door to leave my house, a dagger clattered to the ground. You cannot hang this sort. There is danger for me. I dare not step outside at night. And there is number four with the self-serving Paris. It's one of my favorite lines about what a villain he is. You cannot hang this sort. There is danger for me. He's not concerned about the people getting hung. He's concerned about himself. <laughs> Reverend Hale enters. They look at him for an instant in silence. He is steeped in sorrow, exhausted, and more direct than he ever was. Accept my congratulations, Reverend Hale. We are gladdened to see you return to your good work. You must pardon them. They will not budge. Herrick enters and waits. You misunderstand, sir. I cannot pardon these when twelve are already hanged for the same crime. It is not just. Rebecca will not confess. The sun will rise in a few minutes, Excellency. I must have more time. Now hear me and beguile yourselves no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Then that will not confess will hang. Twelve are already executed. The names of these seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die this morning. Postponement now speaks of floundering on my part. Reprieve or pardon must cast doubt upon the guilt of them that died till now. While I speak God's law, I will not crack its voice with whimpering. If retaliation is your fear, know this. I should hang ten thousand that dared rise against the law, and an ocean of salt tears could not melt the resolution of the statutes. Now draw yourselves up like men and help me, as you are bound by heaven to do. Have you spoken with them all, Mr. Hale? Albert Proctor, he is in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now? He sits like some great bird. You'd not know he lived except he will take food from time to time. His wife. His wife must be well along with child now. She is, sir. What think you, Mr. Paris? You have closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It is possible, sir. He have not laid eyes on her these three months. I should summon her. Is he yet adamant? Has he struck at you again? He cannot, sir. He is chained to the wall now. Huh. Fetch Goody Proctor to me. Then let you bring him up. Aye, sir. He goes, and there's a silence. 
Excellency, if you postpone a week and publish to the town that you are striving for their confessions, that speak mercy on your part, not faltering. Mr. Hale, as God have not empowered me like Joshua to stop this sun from rising, so I cannot withhold from them the perfection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, you are mistaken. You have heard rebellion spoken in the town. Excellency, there are orphans wandering from house to house. Abandoned cattle bellow on the high roads. The stink of rotting crops hangs everywhere. And no man knows when the harlot's cry will end his life. And you wonder yet if rebellion spoke? Better you should marvel how they do not burn your province. Mr. Hale, have you preached in Andover this month? Thank God they have no need of me in Andover. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? Why, it is all simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians they should belie themselves. There is blood on my head! Can you not see the blood on my head? Let's stop and answer number five there before I get too emotional. We are right in the middle of page 1325. Hush! For he has heard footsteps. They all face the door as Herrick enters with Elizabeth. Her wrists are linked by heavy chain, which Herrick now removes. Her clothes are dirty. Her face is pale and gaunt. Herrick goes out. Uh, goody Proctor. I hope you are hearty. I am six months yet before my time. Pray be at your ease. We come not for your life. We... Mr. Hale. Will you speak with the woman? Goody Proctor, your husband is marked to hang this morning. I have heard it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with this court? I come of my own, Goody Proctor. I would save your husband's life, for if he is taken, I count myself his murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want of me? Goody Proctor, I have gone this three months like our lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way, for damnation's doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie. You cannot speak of lies. It is a lie. They are innocent. I'll hear no more of that. Let you not mistake your duty as I mistook my own. I came into this village like a bridegroom to his beloved, bearing gifts of high religion, the very crowns of holy law I brought. And what I touched with my bright confidence, it died. And where I turned the eye of my great faith, blood flowed up. Beware, goody Proctor. Cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. It is mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life, woman. Life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. I beg you, woman. Prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie. Quail not before God's judgment in this, for it may well be that God damns a liar less than he that throws his life away for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot think he will listen to another. I think that be the devil's argument. Woman, before the laws of God, we are as swine. We cannot read his will. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I lack learning for it. Goody Proctor, you are not summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness within you. He will die at the sunrise. Your husband, do you understand it? What say you? Will you contend with him? Are you stone? I tell you true, woman, had I no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes now would be sufficient evidence that you delivered up your soul to hell. A very ape would weep at such calamity. Have the devil dried up any tear of pity in you? Ugh, take her out. It profit nothing she should speak to him. Let me speak with him, Excellency. You'll strive with him? Will you plead for his confession or will you not? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. Let's stop and answer number six right there. I'm now at the bottom of page 1326. A sound, the sibilance of dragging feet on stone. They turn, a pause. Herrick enters with John Proctor. His wrists are chained. 
he is another man now. He's bearded, filthy, his eyes misty as though webs had overgrown them. He halts inside the doorway, his eyes caught by the sight of Elizabeth. The emotion flowing between them prevents anyone from speaking for an instant. Now Hale, visibly affected, goes to Danforth and speaks quietly. Pray, leave them, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? I see light in the sky, mister. Let you counsel with your wife and may God help you turn your back on hell. Excellency, let... Danforth brushes past Hale and walks out. Hale follows. Cheever stands and follows. Hawthorne behind. Herrick goes. Paris, from a safe distance, because he's afraid of Proctor, like, hitting him, from a safe distance, offers, If you desire a cup of cider, Mr. Proctor, I am sure I... Proctor just turns an icy stare at him, and he breaks off. Paris raises his palms toward Proctor. God leads you now. And Paris goes out. Alone, Proctor walks to her, halts. It is as though they stood in a spinning world. It is beyond sorrow, above it. He reaches out his hand as though toward an embodiment not quite real. And as he touches her, a strange soft sound, half laughter, half amazement, comes from his throat. I guess like this. Uh -huh. Is that half laughter, half amazement? I don't know. You judge. He pats her hand. She covers his hand with hers. And then, weak, he sits. Then she sits, facing him. The child? It grows. There is no word of the boys? They're well. Rebecca Samuel keeps them. You have not seen them? I have not. You are... You are a marvel, Elizabeth. You have been tortured? Aye. They come from my life now. I know it. None have yet confessed? There be many confessed. Who are they? There be a hundred or more, they say. Goody Ballard is one. Isaiah Goodkind is one. There be many. Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She is one foot in heaven now. Not may hurt her more. And Giles? You have not heard of it. I hear nothing where I am kept. Giles is dead. He looks at her incredulously. What? When were he hanged? He were not hanged. He would not answer I or nay to his indictment. For if he denied the charge, they'd hang him surely and auction out his property. So he stand mute and died Christian under the law. And so his sons will have his farm. It is the law, for he could not be condemned a wizard without he answer the indictment, I or nay. Then how does he die? They press him, John. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead I or nay. They say he gave them but two more two words. More weight, he says, and died. More weight. I it were a fearsome man, Giles Corey. Let's stop at answer number seven about the legend that is Giles Corey. This is a true thing. I'm in the middle of thirteen. 28 now. I have been thinking I would confess to them, Elizabeth. What say you, if I gave them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, John. That's sure. Giles' wife? Have she confessed? She will not. It is a pretense, Elizabeth. What is? I cannot mount the gibbet like a saint. It is a fraud. I am not that man. My honesty is broke, Elizabeth. I am no good man. Nothing spoiled by giving them this lie that were not rotten long before. And yet, you've not confessed till now that speak goodness in you. Spite only keeps me silent. It is hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It is not for me to give, John. I am... I'd have you see some honesty in it. Let them that never lie die now to keep their souls. It is pretense for me, a vanity that will not blind God nor keep my children out of the wind. What say you? 
John, it come to naught that I should forgive you if you'll not forgive yourself. It is not my soul, John. It is yours. Only be sure of this, for I know it now. Whatever you will do, it is a good man that does it. I have read my heart this three month, John. I have sins of my own to count. It needs a cold wife to prompt lechery. Oh, enough, enough. Better you should know me. I will not hear it. I know you. You take my sins upon you, John. No, I take my own, my own. John, I counted myself so plain, so poorly made. No honest love could come to me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. I never knew how I should, how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. In fright she swerves, because Hawthorne has entered the room. What say you, Proctor? The sun is soon up. Do what you will, but let none be your judge. There be no higher judge under heaven than Proctor is. Forgive me. Forgive me, John. I never knew such goodness in the world. <laughs> Proctor turns from her to Hawthorne. He is off the earth, his voice. Hollow. I want my life. You'll confess yourself. I will have my life. God be praised. It is a providence. He will confess. Proctor will confess. Why do you cry it? It is evil. Is it not? It is evil. I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven. What is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I think it is honest. I think so. I am no saint. Let Rebecca go like a saint. For me it is fraud. I am not your judge. I cannot be. Do as you will. Do as you will. Would you give them such a lie? Say it. Would you ever give them this, Elizabeth? You would not. If tongs of fire were singeing you, you would not, because it is evil. Well, good then. It is evil, and I do it. Stop and answer number eight before I get too worked up here. Hawthorne enters with Danforth, and with them Cheever, Paris, and Hale. It is a businesslike, rapid entrance, as though the ice has been broken. These guys are thinking they're going to get what they want, one of these people to confess. Praise to God, man. Praise to God. You shall be blessed in heaven for this. Now then, let us have it. Are you ready, Mr. Cheever? What? what? Why must it be written? Mister, we shall post this on the church door. Where is the marshal? Marshal, Harry. Now then, mister, will you speak slowly and directly to the point for Mr. Cheever's sake? Mr. Proctor. Have you ever seen the devil in your life? Come, man. There is light in the sky. The town waits at the scaffold. I would give out this news. Did you see the devil? I did. Praise God! And when he come to you, what were his demand? Did he bid you to do his work upon the earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service? Danforth turns as Rebecca Nurse enters, with Herrick helping to support her. Remember, she's an old lady. Come in, come in, woman. Ah, John, you are well then, eh? Proctor turns his face to the wall. He's so ashamed he can't look at her. Courage, man, courage. Let her witness your good example that she may come to God herself. Now hear it, goody nurse. Say on, Mr. Proctor. Did you bind yourself to the devil's service? Oh, why, John? I did. Now, woman, you surely see it profit nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. Will you confess yourself with him? Oh, John, God send his mercy on you. I say, will you confess yourself, goody nurse? Why, it is a lie. It is a lie. How may I damn myself? I cannot. I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when the devil came to you, did you see Rebecca Nurse in his company? Come, man, take courage. Did you ever see her with the devil? No. 
Danforth takes up the list. He's sensing trouble and looks at the other people who are condemned. Did you ever see her sister marry Eastie with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with the devil? I did not. Did you ever see anyone with the devil? I did not. Proctor, you mistake me. I am not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You, most, you have most certainly seen some person with the devil. Mr. Proctor, a score of people have already testified that they saw this woman with the devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Why must you say it? Why, you should rejoice to say it if your soul is truly purged for any love of hell. They think to go like saints. I like not to spoil their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? This woman never thought she'd done the devil's work. Look at you, sir. I think you mistake your duty here. It matter nothing what she thought. She is convicted of the unnatural murder of children and you for sending your spirit out upon Mary Warren. Your soul alone is the issue here, mister, and you will prove its whiteness or you cannot live in a Christian country. Will you tell me now what persons conspired with you in the devil's company? To your knowledge, was Rebecca Nurse ever... I speak my own sins. I cannot judge another... I have no tongue for it! Let's stop and answer number nine right there. This is the confession they want Proctor to sign. I should have written it backwards or something, but it says, it says I am a wizard, signed, and it's blank right now. So this is this is exactly what they would use in the play. I mean, I'm a, I'm a prop master. Excellency, it is enough he confess himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. It is a weighty name. It will strike the village that Proctor confess. I, I beg you, let him sign it. The sun is up, Excellency. Come then, sign your testimony. Give it to him. Cheever goes to Proctor, the confession and a pen in his hand. Proctor does not look at it. Come on, man, sign it. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. You will not sign it. You have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you sport with me? You will sign your name or it is no confession, mister. <sighs> Proctor's got to sign. There it is. John Proctor. Praise be to the Lord! Paris is super hyped. Proctor has just, fin just finished signing when Danforth reaches for the paper, but Proctor snatches it up, and now a wild terror is rising in him, and a boundless anger. If you please, sir. No! Mr. Proctor, I must have... No! No! I have signed it. You have seen me. It is done. You have no need for this. Proctor, the village must have proof that... Damn the village! I confess to God, and God has seen my name on this. It is enough! No, sir. It is... You came to save my soul, did you not? Here! I have confessed myself. It is enough. You have not con... I have confessed myself! Is there no good penitence but it be public? God does not see need my name nailed upon the church. God sees my name. God knows how black my sins are. It is enough! Mr. Proctor, you will not use me! I am no Sarah Good or Tituba. I am John Proctor! You will not use me! It is no part of salvation that you should use me! I do not wish to... I have three children. How may I teach them to walk like men in the world when I have sold my friends? You have not sold your friends. Oh, beguile me not. I blacken all of them when this is nailed to the church the very day they hang for silence. Let's stop and answer number 
10 right there about what he thinks he's doing to his friends. All right, for the moment. Near the bottom of 1332, if you got lost. Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal proof that you... You are the high court! Your word is good enough! Tell them I confessed myself. Say Proctor broke to his knees and wept like a woman. Say what you will, but my name cannot. It is the same, is it not? If I report it, or if you sign to it? No, it is not the same. What others say, and what I sign to, is not the same. Why? Do you mean to deny this confession when you are free? I mean to deny nothing. Then explain to me, Mr. Proctor, why you will not let... BECAUSE IT IS MY NAME! BECAUSE I CANNOT HAVE ANOTHER IN MY LIFE! BECAUSE I LIE AND SIGN MY NAME TO LIES! BECAUSE I AM NOT WORTH THE DUST ON THE FEET OF THEM THAT HANG. I HAVE GIVEN- HOW MAY I LIVE WITHOUT MY NAME? I HAVE GIVEN YOU MY SOUL! LEAVE ME MY NAME! Mr. Proctor, is that document a lie? If it is a lie, I will not accept it. What say you? I will not deal in lies, mister. You will give me your honest confession in my hand, or I cannot keep you from the rope. What way do you go, mister? Marshal! Oh, stop and answer number 11 right there. Got a little into it. Yeah, I have that part memorized. You couldn't tell. Number 11. He rips up the confession. What was his big yelling speech about? Why does he rip up the confession? All right. Middle of 1333. Marshal! Proctor! Proctor! Man, you will hang! You cannot! I can. And there's your first marvel that I can. You have made your magic now, for I now do think I see some shred of goodness in John Proctor. Not enough to weave a banner with, but white enough to keep it from such dogs. Elizabeth, give them no tear. Tears pleasure them. Show honor now. Show a stony heart and sink them with it. Lift her up. Kiss her. A really ugly kiss because they, they've been in jail for like months and they're gross. But anyway, kiss her with great passion. Let you fear nothing. Another judgment waits us all. Hang them high over the town. Who weeps for these, weeps for corruption. He sweeps out past them. Herrick starts to lead Rebecca, who almost collapses. But Proctor catches her, and she glances up at him, apologetically. I've had no breakfast. Come, man. Herrick escorts them out. Hawthorne and Cheever behind them. Elizabeth stands, staring at the empty doorway. Go to him, Goody Proctor! There is yet time! From outside, a drum roll brrr, strikes the air. Paris is startled. Elizabeth jerks about toward the window. Go to him! Proctor! Proctor! Brrr, another short, short burst of drums. Woman, plead with him! Woman, it is pride! It is vanity! Be his helper! What profit him to bleed? Shall the dust praise him? Shall the worms declare his truth? Go to him, take his shame away! He have his goodness now. God forbid I take it from him. Final drum roll crashes, then heightens violently. Hale weeps in frantic prayer, and the new sun is pouring in upon her face, and the drums rattle like bones in the morning air. This has been The Crucible, Act 4. Thanks a lot for coming along for the ride.